Hi students, welcome to the class. Today I am going to discuss the questions from direct and inverse variations, exercise 10.2. So, before going to the class, I like to say one thing to you students. I have, uh, I am getting a lot of views, but only few likes and subscription, okay, that you know. So, you, you know, this is a non-profit channel. I think my class will help you to learn the maths easily. So, if it is correct, please like, subscribe and share. Okay, students. If this class help to learn you, please subscribe, like and share. Okay, students. Otherwise, I will think this is not a useful class. So, I will discontinue this. I will stop my channel. Okay, students. So, if you want to continue my class, you please subscribe, like and share. And um, after this 8th grade, I will start 9th grade also. So, you can continue your study through this class. And uh, I attached a link in the description box. From that, you can download my material. Okay, students. Okay. So, if you want to continue my channel, if you want to you, you subscribe and like. And share my classes okay students if you want to stop my channel you can uh, don't like you can dislike or uh, you can remove your subscriptions okay okay no problem okay again I am telling that this is a non-profit channel I didn't get any earns from this class I'm making my uh, um, learning material myself do uh, I'm not copying a, a from anywhere or anything any books or any guide I am preparing my notes and my answers. So, if you like that, you subscribe and like. Okay. Thank you, students. So, today I told you I am going to take the chapter direct and inverse variation. In the previous video, I explained the problems based on direct variation. Now, I am discussing about the problems based on inverse variation. In the direct variation, if some quantity increases, other quantity also increases. And if one quantity decreases, other quantity also decreases. That means both are going in same way. But in inverse variation, a variation where increase in one quantity causes a decrease in other quantity. That means if one thing increases, other quantity decreases. So, the, uh, that variation is called inverse variation. Now, when x and y are inverse variation, we can write x1, y1 equal to x2, y2. And in the direct variation, we wrote it as x1 by y1 equal to x2 by y2. And here in the inverse variation, it is x1, y1 equal to x2, y2. Where y1 and y2 are the values of y corresponding to the values of x1 and x2 of x respectively. Okay, directly we are going to the exercise 10.2. This based on inverse variation. Our first question, if A and B vary inversely, then find the value of A3 and B2 from the table. Here, A and B vary inversely. So, inversely, we know that x1, y1 equal to x2, y2. So, if A and B vary inversely, then find the value of A3 and B2 from the table. Here, A1 and B1 are given. A2 is given b2 is not given a3 is not given b3 is given so we have to find out b2 and a3 so here the non values are a1 and b1 so you take the product of 16 into 4 equal to 32 into b2 here a1 into b1 equal to a2 into b2 so 16 into 4 equal to 32 into b2 therefore b2 equal to 16 into 4 by 32 Therefore, B2 equal to 2. In the case of direct variation, we will take A1 by B1. But in the inverse variation, we will take the product. Similarly, here A1 and B1 are the non-quantity. A3 is no unknown quantity. So, A1 into B1 equal to A3 into B3. So, 16 into 4 equal to A3 into 0 0.5. Here, B3 is 0 0.5. So, you substitute. We will get after simplification. We will get A3 equal to 128. Second one, it is given that x varies inversely with y and x equal to 9 when y equal to 21. Find the value of x when y equal to 7. 
here it is given that x varies inversely with the y so we know that if both are varying inversely we can use the formula x1 y1 equal to x2 y2 so here we have to find out the value of x when y equal to 7 since x varies inversely with y x1 into y1 equal to x2 into y2 which implies 9 into 21 equal to x into 7 so 9 into 21 by 7 equal to x therefore the value of x is equal to 27 so when y equal to 7 x equal to 27 now third one state which of these have direct or inverse variation so we have to check uh, which ratios are direct or uh, uh, which one is inverse so in the first question it is given that in the table it is given that a b 4 32 8 16 12 32 by 3 here first you check whether these are direct so i marked that sir that that's all r a1 equal to 4 b1 equal to 32 a2 equal to 8 b2 equal to 16 a3 equal to 12 b3 equal to 32 by 3 so uh, first i am going to check whether they are in direct variation so a1 by b1 equal to 4 by 32 it's equal to 1 by 8 a2 by b2 equal to 8 by 16 equal to 1 by 2 a3 by b3 equal to 12 by 32 by 3 it's equal to 9 by 8 these values are not equal so they are not constant values so they are in not in direct variation so again i am checking whether they are in inverse variation so for that i took a1 into b1 a2 b2 and a3 b3 so a1 into b1 i got it as 128 a2 into b2 i got it as again 128 and a3 into b3 again i got it as 128 so the values are constant they remain same so they are in inverse variation it satisfies the condition for inverse variations so these a1 b1 a2 b2 and a3 b3 are in inverse variation and next question b here the table is given a b 1339 27 by 8 27 and 81 so a1 equal to 1 b1 equal to 3 a2 equal to 3 b2 equal to 9 a3 equal to 27 b3 equal to 81 so first you check whether they are in direct variation for this i took a1 by b1 is equal to 1 by 3 a2 by b2 is equal to again 1 by 3 and a3 by b3 is also 1 by 3 so i got the same value that means they are in constant value so they are in direct variation next one fourth one Pritha had enough money to buy 15 books for rupees 30 each if the price of each book increases resulting in a total cost increases of rupees 45 how many books can she buy now how much money will be left with her so Ritha had enough money to buy 15 books for rupees 30 each so how much money he she has she has 15 into 30 that's equal to 450 rupees she has so she has 450 rupees to buy 15 books for rupees 30 each so each book has 30 rupees and she can buy 15 books so she has only 450 rupees in her hand now if the price of each book increases the price of each book increases and the total increasing amount is 45 that means the uh, increasing amount for 15 book is 45 so how much for uh, one book we have to divide 45 divided by 15 you will get 3 so for each book rupees 3 increased for 15 book 45 rupees increased so that for each book 3 rupees increased so the cost of each book is equal to 33 the original price was 30 now the book uh, the price is increased by 33 the new price is 33 so number of books equal to 15 cost for each book equal to 30 therefore the total cost for 15 books equal to 450 Rita has 450 rupees total cost increased by 45 so the new total cost is equal to 450 plus 45 is equal to 495 now increased cost per book so 45 by 15 equal to 3 3 rupees increased for each book therefore the cost price for each book equal to 30 plus 3 equal to 33 now what do you have to find you have to find out how many books she can buy for the price of book is 33 
So let x1 be the number of books, y1 be its cost, let x2 be the number of book with increased price, y2 its its cost. So x1 equal to 15, y1 equal to 450, x2 we don't know, we have to find out, y2 equal to 495. So we know that if the price of a book increased, the number of books will decrease. So this is an inverse variation. So by using our formula x1 y1 equal to x2 y2. So this is equal to 15 into 450 equal to x2 into 495. Then simplifying we will get 13.63. We cannot buy a fractional book or decimal book. So she can buy only 13 books. She can buy only the 13 books. So cost for 13 books equal to 13 into 33 is equal to 429. So she has to spend 429 rupees to buy 13 books. So the remaining amount, she has 450 rupees. The remaining or the balance with her is 450 minus 429. It's equal to 21 rupees. So 21 rupees left with her. In a school camp, there was enough food for 8 students for 30 days. If 12 more students join, then for how many days will the food last? So there is a school camp and uh, there is a enough food for 8 students for 30 days. So for 8 students for 30 days and 12 more students are joined. Then the number of students became 30. Sorry, number of uh, students became 20. 8 plus 12 is equal to 20. Now original uh, previous number of students equal to 8 and 12 more students join. Now the number of students equal to 8 plus 12 equal to 20. But only for 8 students it is enough for 30 days. For 8 students 30 days. But our question is if 12 more students join then how for how many days will the food last? Since the number of students increased the days of food per person decreased. They are in inverse variation. Since the number of students increased, the days will decrease. So this is an inverse variation. So using the formula x1 y1 equal to x2 y2. So 8 into 30 equal to 20 into y2. 8 into 30 equal to 20 into y2. So y2 is what? Y2 is the number of days the food enough for 20 students. So 8 into 30 by 20 equal to y2. Therefore, y2 equal to 12. So, the number of days is equal to 12. Now, next one. A man drive a car at the speed of 60 km per hour to reach a place in 6 hours. If he drives the car at the speed of 45 km per hour, how long would it take for him to cover the same distance? Here, the distance is same, but the speed is different. So, how much time? That speed, the time will be different. Here the distance is same, speed is different so that the time will be different. Here the speed is 60 km so it takes 6 hours to complete that distance and it, uh, speed is decreased. So what about the time? Time will increase. The time to cover that same distance will increase. So it is an inverse variation. If the speed decreases, the time will increase for the same distance. Therefore, this is an inverse variation. So, by our formula x1, y1 equal to x2, y2. Here, x1 equal to 60 km per hour, y1 equal to 6 hours. And x2 equal to 45 km per hour, y2. We have to find out. So, 60 into 6 equal to 45 into y2. So, 60 into 6 by 45 equal to y2. So, 8 equal to y2. So, the time taking for the same distance with the speed 45 km per hour equal to 8 hours. So, the time is increased. For the 60 km speed, it is 6 hours. So, for 45 km per hour, uh, it takes 8 hours. Next one, a hostel spends Rs. 3200 on food for 20 students for 30 days. If they spend Rs. 2400 for 30 students, then for how many days will the food last? Here, a hostel spends Rs. 3200 on food for 20 students for 30 days. For 30 days and 20 students, the spending for food is 3200. For 30 days and 20 students, the spend is 3200. If they spend rupees 2400 for 30 students, then for how many days will the food last? 
if they spend 2400 for 30 students then how many days will the food last here we have to find out how many days will the food last if it, they spend rupees 2400 for 30 students here the amount that spend on food for 20 students for 30 days is equal to 3200 so cost of food for one day for one student the total amount spent on food for 20 students for 30 days is equal to 3200 now cost of food for one day for one student it equal to 3200 by 20 into 30 it is equal to 16 by 3 rupees and the cost for food for a student is same it is 16 by 3 rupees now we have to find out the number of days if 2400 is the amount to spend for 30 students here the number of students is different and the amount is different but the cost for food for one, for one student is same so we can equate that cost so 16 by 3 equal to 2400 divided by 30 into x where x is the number of days so x is equal to after simplification we will get x is equal to 15 days now our eighth question 10 men working for six days can complete five copies of a book if there are eight men working to complete four copies of the book how many days will it take here 10 men working for six days can complete five copies of book so here 10 men working for six days so to make this five copies of book 10 into 6 that is 60 working days we need because 10 men working for 6 days means 60 working days so given 10 men working for 6 days to complete 5 copies of book so 10 into 6 that is 60 days used to make 5 copies now for making one copy the time is 12 days how will you get that 60 divided by 5 equal to 12 that means 12 days per person per book so to make one copy of a book for one person 12 days will take 60 by 5 equal to 12 so to make four books how much days will take 4 into 12 equal to 48 days will take for making one book one person taking 12 days so four books to complete four books 4 into 12 that is 48 days will take so here only eight men are working so the number of days is equal to 48 divided by 8 equal to 6 days so making four copies of the book 6 days will take now our last question 9 to 1 2 workers earn rupees 2400 each for 2 hours work if there are 5 workers how much will they earn working for the same number of hours when the budget remains the same so here the budget remains the same means the earning for 1 hour is same so first you find out 2 workers earn rupees 2400 each for 2 hours of work so 2 workers earn rupees 2400 rupees so 1 work, worker will earn 2400 divided by 2 is equal to 1200 rupees for 2 hours work so 5 hours will uh, 5 workers will learn 1200 into 5 it's equal to 6000 rupees okay students thanks for watching i ha i have attached one a link in the description box from that link box links you can find out this material and you can download that Okay, don't forget to subscribe and like and share. I told you, subscription and like is inspiration to me to make more and more videos. So, after 8th uh, grade, I will prepare notes for 9th grade also from this book. So, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, students, thanks for watching.